Hi, Great Fools Natural Science. Today we're going to learn materials around us, change of state. What are our learning outcomes today? Describe heating and cooling cause solids, liquids, and gases to change states. Investigating evaporation, condensation, freezing, and melting using water and ice. The third one is investigating melting, solidifying, using water and ice. What are our key questions today? Our first one would be, how can water be a solid, a liquid and a gas? What change of state takes place when a solid melts, a substance melts, how does my ice cube melt in the sun? What change of state takes place when a substance evaporates? Why does my water start bubbling in the kettle when it gets hot? Now, let's recap on our previous lesson. We learned about the states of substances, the solid, the liquid, and the gas. The three most important characteristics or properties that differ among them is that solids have a definite shape for an example if you take a chair it has a definite cha it, it shape it's very hard for you to just change its shape you have to take a hammer and beat it into something else uh, but for liquid it does not have a definite shape if you take liquid like taking a glass and pouring from a tap water it, the, the, the liquid itself takes up the shape of the glass but gases have no definite shape as well uh, the second property it takes up definite space for example if you take um, your clothes for your laundry it, it if the laundry basket takes up particular space in the room and if you put it the only way you can um, package it is to have a box that it's it's as high and putting the basket in the box just for you to pack it a uh, liquid does have definite uh, does take up definite space as I said before, if you want to drink water from a tap, you take a glass and the liquid just fills up the whole glass, which is taking up space, definite space. Uh, but gas, since gas is everywhere and uh, moves anyhow, it, it, it just it moves everywhere. It, it takes up all the space available. Solid does not flow, a liquid can flow and gases can flow. An, an example for gassing, I guess, is uh, being able to flow. As you can see in the picture, there are scientists, they are working with gases that are stored in tanks. Another example would be um, your oxygen uh, cylinders in hospitals. If you visit someone in a hospital, you'll notice there's um, a pipe connected from a tap a tank filled with oxygen to your nose and the next one if you go to your regular party then there's a huge cylinder um, metal it has uh, helium inside so that we can make your balloons fly high and float away now let's talk about how can water be a solid a liquid and a gas what is the change of state? Heating, cooling um, cause solids, liquid, and gases to change states. A substance can change from one state to another. For an example, a solid can change into a liquid. What causes a change of state? If you take tap water, as you can see in the picture here, if you can take tap water, put it in an ice tray, and then put it in a freezer, what would happen to the water? It would be frozen into ice, as you can see. 
And now, if you take that ass and put it outside in the sun, you can see there's water, so it's melting, right? What happened? The difference between the freezer and the sun is that outside is hot, and then the other one, which is the freezer, is very cold. If it's cold enough, it will freeze into ice cubes, as you can see here. But if it's hot outside, it will melt. As you can see, the, it's turning from ice, solid ice, into liquid. But for the, the fridge, the freezer, it turned from liquid to a solid ice. Did you, did you get that? So, it, 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 this is because the, ch the state of matter can be changed from one to another by adding or removing heat. Adding heat is when you put your ass right outside and let the sun keep warming it up. And that's how we change from a solid to a liquid. But if you're removing heat, would be you taking the water, the lukewarm, the room temperature water into a cold free fridge, you're removing heat from that liquid and you're turning it to ice. All right. How can I turn water to be a solid, a liquid and a gas? The ice changed from this the solid to liquid is called melting as you can see this is a solid ice it's turning into a liquid because of the sun heat so what's happening here it's melting the substance experience a change of temperature which is a rise in temperature in other words the ice was being heated if my heated water in a kettle what if my what if I'm heating water in a kettle? Why does the water start uh, start boiling? Now let's let's notice. This is the kettle, right? And then there's steam, and then there's fire right beneath. The, this is the manual old type of kettles. If you if you if you look at home and get mommy or daddy or aunt or anyone at home to just put water in a kettle for you. Even if it's your normal electric household uh, kettle, you would notice they have one thing in common. Right when it's about to stop, it has a lot of steam coming out of its opening. And so if it's getting heated, why does it start bubbling? In the kettle, when it's, it gets really hot, the liquid water turns into steam which is a gas so it turned from liquid to water vapor now it's a gas the steam right so that's what we call evaporation evaporation takes place when the heat is added to the water when you're boiling it and it means the water changes from the liquid to a, a gas state okay so your 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 water stops boiling and it starts to cool down right at the lid of your kettle did you ever notice while the ste steam is slowly uh simmering down and the steam gets all um a lot at the at the lid like it gets so much steam at the lid that it makes up droplets that's when the steam turns into liquid again that's what we call condensation the steam that comes out of the kettle is extremely hot and you cannot see it the steam attaches itself to the surface of the kettle remember the water is hot but the kettle at the top, since it's not touching the water, is also exposed to the cold air. So it's making the surface a different temperature, which is much, 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 much colder than the water itself. Because the steam is touching a cold surface, 
it's, it's changing temperatures, causing it to change states into droplets. And droplets is what we like to call liquid states. So the change of states from gas, which is the steam that's coming from the hot water, to, to the lid, into the, uh, the droplets, which is the liquid, is now called condensation. Another example is when, when you place ice cold glass of water, as you can see right here. Let's just look at the water itself. The water has ice in it. Ice is cold, is it not? It is cold. So when you put something cold in the in the glass, the glass itself becomes cold, is it not? So where the ice is touching the glass itself it becomes super cold did you notice that the temperature won't be the same at the opening where the ice is not touching and then the opening instead of the bottom of the glass where it has a lot of ice it's not going to be the the same temperature because here has very icy icy cold water but here it's experiencing normal room temperature so whenever the air around it the warm um, moist air this is the warm moist air it's about to touch the cold surface of the glass now you can see that so the warm air touches the surface turns cold and here it is it turns into liquid droplets it's 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 it, it's like taking this this gas this steam you can see it's very moist is it and it touches this cold surface those same droplets freezes on the surface of the glass and turns into liquid liquid droplets so that's what we call condensation that's when it starts to cool down removing heat all right this is a diagram that simplifies what we just learned if you are heating um ice it's melting and it turns into liquid water if you keep heating it up it will turn into steam now it's evaporation it's evaporating now is it is it not excuse me so if you want to turn the steam back to liquid the steam has to touch a cold surface turning it to droplets that's kind of condescension right and then it turns to much colder from liquid liquid to solid which is ice now you're freezing it so we've learned four whole processes that depends on whether you're heating it or you're cooling it down. The last one is when you remove more heat, which is freezing, but a nicer term for it is solidifying. It's when you put a tap water into the ice tray into a freezer, that tap water turns into solid ice which is changing it from liquid into a solid. This process is called solid, solidifying. So let's uh, recap, let's put it all together now, what we learned today in the form of changing from one state to another. Looking at solid, if you want to turn a solid to a liquid, what should you do if you want to turn your ice into a liquid you put it in the sun right if you put it in the sun what happens to the ice it starts melting why because you added heat to it now if you want to put the liquid make the liquid into a gas what do you do you add more heat now the heating causes what evaporation evaporation is when a liquid becomes a gas okay 
now if you want to do that a reverse process which is making a gas to a liquid what do you do that same steam at the kettle the the steam touches the surface of the kettle and then it turns into water droplets is it not and what do you call that condensation turns back to a liquid now you want to make a liquid into a solid what do you do you put the tap water in the freezer what is that solidifying now you freeze it and so that's all that we learned today friends your homework would be to really tell us which process is it if it's melting does it which process turns it to a state and are you heating it or are you cooling it here's an example for the first one the first process is melting the answer for melting isn't it you putting an ice cube in the sun so you adding heat to eating you heating the ice cube right from which state does it turn into if you heat basically whichever but most preferably we want to say solid to liquid so number two is your answer but let's do the next one together solidifying okay what is solidifying let's remind ourselves solidifying is when you take a liquid and making it a solid by putting it in the fridge right in a very cold place so which state are you turning it to solid i mean liquid to solid where's liquid here's liquid to solid so which process is it it's number one are you if you're making a liquid to a solid is it is it putting it out on the sun is it heating it or are you putting it in the fridge you're cooling it down but pulling it you're putting it in the fridge excuse ma'am's writing she doesn't have a pen with her so it looks really untidy unfortunately i'm not really happy with this looks funny okay it's cooling so the rest is for you to do as homework and for the next time we see each other we'll be going through the change of state in a bigger scale this time which is water cycle so i'll see you next time my bright stars if you want more content you can um, go to a youtube channel of miss vega bye